Continuous delivery is the best way that we know to create better software faster. So what's the impact of that on the organizations that practice it? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and if you think it appropriate, like the video. Uh, in today's episode, uh, I want to talk about the impact of continuous delivery on the organisations that practice it. As you might expect, I think that the impact is very positive, and that's what I'm hoping to convince you of during the course of this video. I'm going to list five benefits that I perceive uh, for organisations that practice continuous delivery. And I'm going to start the description of each benefit with a quote from somebody working within a continuous delivery organisation. The first on my list is that organisations that practice continuous delivery create better software faster. Software quality and stability are essential so we can focus on adding value instead of fixing bugs. Continuous delivery is the approach used by some of the biggest, most successful companies in the world. Uh, Google, Amazon, Netflix, Tesla, Ericsson, Microsoft, Capital One Bank are just some of the names that publicly talk about their practice of continuous delivery. Many other household names are already practicing continuous delivery or are working to make the transition towards it. Why is this the case and what is it that these businesses perceive in continuous delivery? What does development look like in those kinds of organizations? Companies with a more traditional approach to software development have had a very different experience of development uh, as a practice. It's been problematic. If you look at the data that analyzes the performance of software projects across our industry, it tends to tell a tale that's fairly dismal. It's fairly woeful. In this example, this last one, uh, describes uh, that companies building large systems with budgets of over $15 million, 17% of those projects go so badly that they threaten the existence of the businesses that began them. That's a staggering record of poor performance, really. I sometimes draw this picture of software projects. If software development was a normal thing, as many software projects would finish ahead of schedule, under budget, delighting their users as finish behind schedule, over budget and annoying their users. But I don't think that's what we think of as normal in our industry. I think what we think of as normal is much more skewed towards the failure end of the spectrum. And that has some serious impacts on the way in which those organisations um, uh, react to such changes. Continuous delivery eliminates that kind of that kind of picture and we see significantly better results as a uh, as a result of this practice 44 percent more effort spent on creating value is spent by teams that practice continuous delivery when paddy power introduced continuous delivery to, as part of their development approach a few years ago they saw a 95 percent reduction in defects in production within the first year these are staggering numbers. These are significant impacts on the efficiency and quality that we can produce. If you'd like to learn more about the continuous delivery techniques that these successful companies practice, my latest course on how to write better software faster is on sale now. Details about the course and how to get two free preview lessons is in the description below. The second on my list of attributes uh, that we can find in continuous delivery practitioners is they tend to have more highly skilled and happier development teams. Continuous delivery leads to a happier, more productive team environment, which is great for recruitment and retention. Does your business attract innovators? Does it attract the development teams that you want? Can your business react quickly to changes as they approach you from a commercial point of view, a technical point of view, whatever? Is your staff engaged and enthused in the practice of software development? Is it an exciting place to work for these creative people? I want to tell you the story briefly of ING. 
one of the larger banks in, in Holland, in the Netherlands. Uh, ING um, had uh, a variety of different uh, uh, pieces of software, as, as any large bank would. One of their pieces of software was a mobile phone application for their customers. And the most common comment in the iPhone app store for their application, for their app, was, why can't we vote zero stars? The application was so bad that the customers hated it. ING recruited a senior uh, leader in the technology space of the bank who revolutionized their approach and went wholesale for the adoption of continuous delivery. As a result of that, a few years later, they're now scoring, I think, last time I looked, I think it was 4.7, somewhere 4.7 or 4.9 stars for their app in the, in the App Store. And they, they claim to be recruiting higher quality staff because it's now an exciting place for people to work. It's where people aspire to work in Amsterdam, where their, their, their key development center is. Microsoft. Uh, adopted continuous delivery uh, and they did some analysis of the behaviors of, of, of the team and I'm going to quote uh, from from what Microsoft say before implementing the technical practices and discipline of continuous delivery on the Bing team engineers reported a work-life balance sc satisfaction score of just 38 percent after implementing these technical practices the scores jumped to 75%. That's a significant change in um, the, the quality of experience for, for staff in your organization. The number one predictor of high performance measured on scores of stability and throughput, the quality of the software that is produced and the efficiency with which it's produced, the number one predictor of good performance in those, in those scales is job satisfaction. Third on my list, reduce risk and where appropriate, increase regulatory compliance. Our CD efforts and the Agile and DevOps transformation that followed has led to fundamental discussions about organisation and governance of software development and to improved understanding and alignment between business and IT. Continuous delivery works pretty much everywhere, at least in my experience. It doesn't matter the technology, the regulatory regime, the hardware dependencies very often. Whatever the nature of the technology or the focus of the business that, that are employing it, continuous delivery is a benefit. I want to tell you my story. Uh, I worked in part of my career for an organization that was involved as a startup in creating one of the world's highest performance financial exchanges. It was a company called Elmax. Within Elmax, we, were, we started uh, work uh, as a startup um, while I was in the middle of writing the continuous delivery book. And so we practiced continuous delivery from day one, from the outset, and grew the company as a continuous delivery only company. Some of the technical boundaries, we had a single monolithic repository which contained our entire enterprise system. The system itself was big and complex. It processed tens of billions of pounds worth of other people's money on a daily basis. And it processed, in, in data volume terms, it was processing 1.3 times the daily volume of Twitter at the time when I left. Um, as I said, LMAX practiced continuous delivery throughout, including assuring that every successful release candidate was automatically regulatory compliant. We were a finance company. We were regulated by the finance uh, regulators and we had to abide by those rules. It was harder for us to release a change into production that was not compliant than it was for us to release a change that was. We generated full-scale audit trails, automatically generated uh, release notes, and so on and so on and so on. <clears throat> we went 13 months uh, uh, and five days before the first bug was detected by a user of our system. 
in production. We noticed bugs, but the bugs were sufficiently esoteric that users didn't notice them because we caught the straightforward ones with our automated testing. Let's just for a moment contrast this with one of the worst or at least most expensive software disasters that we've faced so far. And this was Knight Capital, who mistraded $2.5 billion worth of assets in the New York Stock Exchange over a 45-minute period. Using traditional, ineffective software development and release methodologies. The company went bankrupt as a result of this. They ended up with a bill at the end of the trading day after rewinding the $2.5 in missed trades of about $460 million, which they couldn't afford to pay. Continuous delivery provides us better control and lower risk way of working and allows us to monitor that and report on it and trace it. The fourth on my list of, uh, of attributes of continuous delivery organisations, it brings better customer focus. With continuous delivery, the gap between the customers and the software delivery organisation can be continuously reduced. This is important because reducing the gaps is part of the way in which we can work more effectively. I like this model from Stephen Bungay's book, which talks about outcomes, plans and actions and the gaps between each of those activities. The gap between outcomes and plans is the knowledge gap. Um, what, we, what we'd like to know versus what we really know. The gap between plans and actions is the alignment gap. What we'd like people to do versus what they really do. And the outcome between actions and outcomes is the effects gap. What we think the outcome is going to be versus what the actual outcome is. This is quite a nice model and it's problematic because how do you reduce the gaps? The traditional way of reducing these gaps is to increase bureaucracy and to, to, to find, you know, be more strict about rules and all that kind of stuff. The most effective way of reducing these gaps though is to shorten the whole cycle. By making things, making these gaps smaller, we reduce their impact. And that's precisely what continuous delivery does. Continuous delivery enables businesses to become more experimental. It allows businesses to try commercial and product ideas in the field quickly and efficiently. This is the real difference between monstrously huge companies like Amazon or Google and more, more traditional companies. Those companies move quickly and experiment with ideas and learn quickly. This is really about economies of speed. My friend Gregor Hope does this great breakdown of the ways that the, the economies that you use in different styles of management and organization. And he characterizes digitally disrupted organizations as focusing on economies of speed. If we can move quickly with confidence, we're able to learn more effectively. And that way we're able to hone our commercial impact and our product offerings to better meet the needs of our customers and clients. The last in my list of uh, advantages that continuous delivery brings to the businesses that practice it is that these organizations make more money than organizations that don't. Working with large enterprises, I've seen that the technical agility continuous delivery supports can be leveraged for greater business agility. The impact of continuous delivery uh, on, on, on such organisations is, is significant. But surprisingly, we can measure the impact commercially. The State of DevOps report um, reported that organisations that practice con continuous delivery saw a 50% higher market cap growth over a three-year period. Eric Minnick, who works for IBM on their continuous delivery tooling, um, wrote a fantastic uh, blog post, which is linked below, uh, in which he decided he was going to structure his investment 
uh, in, in stocks and shares uh, are only are around organisations that claimed to be and publicly spoke about practising continuous delivery and DevOps. He says that his only regret so far is that he didn't invest more money in that strategy. So there's some real world evidence that this has a direct commercial impact on the, the, the effectiveness of our organisations. Continuous delivery allows us to make better quality software more quickly, fulfil regulatory demands more effectively, um, have happier staff who are more inventive and more creative in the work that they do. As a result, those staff have less burnout and seem to stay for longer with the, the organisations that practice continuous delivery. Continuous delivery practitioners deliver more reliably on business goals. And the bottom line is the bottom line. These organisations make more money than traditional organisations. My argument for continuous delivery, I think, is compelling. I believe that continuous delivery will impact on any business. Either your business will adopt continuous delivery and you'll be learning these more effective, more efficient ways of producing software, or it won't, and at some point one of your competitors will adopt these practices, and when they do, they will beat you in the market, because this is a more effective way of being digitally disruptive and creating better quality software faster. Thank you very much for watching. If you missed last week's episode, it's all about the benefits and advantages of continuous delivery for development teams. And if you, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and, uh, and hit the notification icon. That way you won't miss any more episodes. Thank you.